now <laughs> House File 329, Representative Rarick. Uh, the chair will move House File 329 to be re referred to the government operations and also move the uh, A2 amendment to get into the shape the author would like. Um, Objections, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the House File 329th amended does uh, before us Representative Rarick. Uh, and I believe this is probably uh, for the um, information for the um, room here, this is probably at least the third time we've heard the fireworks bill. So um, I'm hoping that all the members will just kind of keep general broad statements we've all heard and said before to a minimum and, and we'll just take action on this bill, whatever it may be, Representative Rarick. Well, Mr. Chair, if I could make a comment about that. Yeah. Mr. Chair, there's a number of new members on our committee, so I'm hoping that uh, um, we won't limit some of that conversation because, uh, again, on our side, we have some new members and on your side, you have some new members and they have not heard any of those arguments yet. I don't really know how I would limit any conversation. I never have yet, so. <laughs> Representative Rarick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I have actually um, tried to reach out to s uh, most of the new members uh, to kind of um, let them know I'm gonna focus <laughs> most of my testimony on some of the changes, but I'm um, more than w willing to answer any questions that come up, so. Um, with that, um, House File 329, um, is looking to expand the sales and use of fireworks in Minnesota. In 2002, we legalized the use of what is called novelties, uh, ground-based and spark emitting. Um, this is looking to expand to what technically would be a 1.4G. Um, we're defining that as aerial and audible. Um, firecrackers, bottle rockets, Roman candles, and then types that would be put into a launch tube. Um, so these would go into the air and make noise, basically. Um, as the chairman said, um, this is the third or fourth time that I've presented this. Um, we've been getting a lot of feedback from different groups. And so some of the things that we've uh, tried to address, um, I'll go over that, uh, the amendment and some of the other things when we originally drafted it are looking to address that. Um, one, of the, one of the main changes that has been made is um, the issue over the safety um, of where fireworks are sold. And I'm sure many of you have heard that you would like to have fireworks sold in a permanent structure that meets fire code. And I listened to those uh, testimonies very, or arguments very closely. Um, but one of the big issues um, we have is in the state of Minnesota, we have several nonprofit organizations, say Boy Scouts, church groups. They use this as one of their main fundraisers for the year. And they use uh, tents to do this for a short period of time. If you remember, we uh, limited the sale of aerial and audible fireworks last year to about a five or six weeks period so we could stay with tents. Um, what we have done to try to work with both groups is we are expanding to allow sales uh, year round. If you're going to sell for 60 days or less, you would be allowed to sell in a tent. That is going to allow our <coughs> nonprofit organizations and small organizations to be able to sell. If you're going to sell for more than 60 days, you would then be required to go into a permanent structure that meets fire code. Um, one of the other uh, reasons for this as well, um, permanent structures would be built in areas of um, high residency, um, areas in rural Minnesota with smaller populations would not see these uh, structures put up. And realistically, it's the areas in rural Minnesota that uh, are really looking for this and where they're more appropriate to be used. Um, and as many of you know before, um, you know, we have this in the bill specifically that local jurisdictions can ban the sales and use. Um, so places of higher population can ban them. Um, but so we don't want to, I don't want to be able to um, restrict uh, groups from being able to sell. And I believe by restricting the use of tents that, that that's what we're doing. The number one reason that I'm bringing this um, Many of you know if you drive around on Independence Day and the weekends around it, the fireworks are here. The state of Wisconsin, the states of North and South Dakota are selling these fireworks and they're selling them to Minnesotans. Um, I uh, stopped at a 
one of these uh, places last year on July 2nd and asked them approximately how many uh, people that you're selling to are from Minnesota. Their response was about 80%. So the fireworks are here. So uh, one thing I would like you to keep in mind as we, you know, one of the issues that we have, we know fireworks in and of themselves can be dangerous if used improperly. Um, so there is the risk of injury, there is the risk of fire. But because they're already here and Minnesotans who want to use them have access to them, I do not believe that we are going to see an, a large increase in injuries or in fires. Um, they're, they're already here and they're being used. So um, in 2010, it was estimated that Minnesota is losing about $5 million a year in sales taxes alone. And I believe if Minnesotans are going to be using uh, the fireworks, uh, Minnesota should be collecting that revenue. Um, one of the other issues in regard to safety is if we pass the law allowing them here, you will see the fireworks companies running ads and included in those ads are safety um, precautions and safe ways to use the fireworks. <coughs> that's, that's what's happened in other states and that just continues to make them safer. And if you look at the chart that I passed out, um, you will see that uh, since 1976 um, till today, there's been a dramatic increase in the use of fireworks, yet the injuries have gone down. And that's because the industry is making safer fireworks and they're promoting the safe use of fireworks. So um, with that, I will uh, end my testimony and move to the testifiers, our questions. Why don't we go down the list here and then we'll ask for public testimony when we get done too if there's anybody missing. But um, Mr. Haynes, the co-owner of Bear Creek Pyrotechnics, are you here? Would you like to come up and give us your name and title and begin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Steve Haynes. I'm a co-owner of Bear Creek Pyrotechnics. Uh, we operate out of Hinkley, Minnesota. Uh, we're a small business. We do fireworks displays. Uh, we would like to grow our business, and the way we would do that <coughs> would be to be selling these aerial fireworks that's on HF329. Uh, it's a difficult environment for small businesses to grow in these days, and this is an opportunity to become profitable, to grow, to hire people. Um, the way it is right now, people are going across the borders. I work off of a trunk highway, Highway 48. I live two miles south of that. We operate our business out of there. Uh, I'm watching my friends and neighbors drive across the river. And I'm watching not only tax dollars go out the door, but I'm watching the profitability, profitability of my business uh, go down the drain with it. Um, the opportunity to expand our business and hire people is something we've long sought and we would like the opportunity to see HF 329 get approved. Uh, again, thank you for allowing me to testify here today. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions for our testifier? If none, uh, Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bruce you, Mr. West, Chairman. the Minnesota State Fire Marshal. <coughs> our firefighter friends, this is about the only issue we're crossways on, I think. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. And for the record, I am Bruce West. I'm your Minnesota State Fire Marshal. And I'd like to thank you for the opportunity uh, for my testimony today. It is the State Fire Marshal Division's mission to protect the safety and well-being of the citizens of Minnesota, including in this our dedication to protect all Minnesotans, including the innocent bystanders, <coughs> bystanders of all ages who may become victims of someone else's carelessness when igniting fireworks. As Representative Rarick said, prior to 2002, essentially all fireworks were illegal in Minnesota. In reviewing the statistics, and all of you should have received a handout that was developed by the State Fire Marshal Division on injuries and also property damage, property loss, on fireworks related injuries from 1992 to 2001 and the period 2002 to 2016, in which non aerial and non explosive uh, fireworks, uh, you can see that the injuries rose by 120 percent from 2002 to 2016. Even more concerning to me as your state fire marshal is that nearly 50 percent 
of the injuries from 2002 to 2016 were suffered by citizens 19 years of age and younger, and 22% were children nine years old and younger. Since 2002, statistics also show a significant increase in property damage loss in the state of Minnesota. Even more, uh, the changes in the current fireworks statute could exa exaggerate these statistics. It's gonna increase these statistics. For these reasons, I'm opposed to the bill. Fireworks are dangerous even in a well-supervised fireworks use and fireworks is exceedingly dangerous. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to testify before your committee today, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions for our testifier? If none, uh, Chief Wayne, pronounce your name when you come up. <laughs> oh, both the chiefs come up, you bet. <coughs> Uh, Chief Jungman and Kiewich? Kiewich. Kiewich. Chair Cornish and committee members, I want to begin by thanking you uh, for your support of the fire service and uh, many initiatives that have come before you. Thank you for taking my testimony today as you deliberate on whether or not to expand the fireworks in Minnesota. I am BJ Jungman. I'm the fire chief for the city of Burnsville and beside me is Fire Chief Wayne Kiewich uh, from the city of Richfield. We are here on behalf of four Minnesota Fire Service organizations, the Minnesota Fire Chiefs Association, the Minnesota Fire Department Association, the Fire, fire Marshals Association of Minnesota, and the International Association of Arson Inve Investigators, the Min Minnesota chapter. As passionate advocates of public safety, we oppose the legalization of the recreational use of explosives. We call them fireworks, but what we're really talking about is legalizing broad use of ground and aerial explosives by the general public. There's no question that they cause injury and fire, and should this legislation pass, we can expect an increase in both. Uh, part of the bill uses the American Pyrotechnics Association standards. It allows voting membership, uh, only voting membership to commercial users. Uh, importers of fireworks, distribution of fireworks, and manufacturing of fireworks, thus leaving uh, important stakeholders of the fire service out of that. It also references the National Fire Protection Association 1124 standard uh, version from 2006, which is not the current standard. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The legislation does not allow for important safety measures that are currently used with aerial explosives in Minnesota, such as fallout zones, permission for use, restrictions on weather, insurance and bonding restrictions, kill switches, training and certification for the operator, and the checking for hot embers after discharging the explosives. We believe that these explosives are best handled and discharged by qualified individuals to ensure the safety of everyone, which is currently in place in Minnesota. The Minnesota specific data is re relayed by the state fire marshal um, that we've seen an increase in injuries and property damage. We want to acknowledge Representative Rarick as he has directed uh, a portion of the sales tax receipts from the fireworks sale towards firefighting equipment and small departments and the fire safety account. While this is greatly appreciated, we can't in good conscience support this bill to legalize the recreational use of explosives. Make no mistakes, fireworks injure people and cause property damage, so why take a chance? We ask you to join a long list of organizations that oppose the expansion of fireworks due to the increased risk, risk to public safety. There was a handout given that has a list of the uh, op um, opponents of the fireworks bill, and those include the Minnesota Chapter of Emergency, American College of Emergency Physicians, the League of Minnesota Cities, and other associations. Thank you for, your op for the opportunity to speak today, and uh, Chief Kiewicz and I will stand for any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Any questions, members, so far? <clears throat> Okay, if there is none, thank you very much. Appreciate your testimony. And uh, Dan Peart of Phantom Fireworks, would you come up? Yes. <coughs> Go ahead, sir, with your introduction and then your testimony. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Dan Peart, and I'm the Director of Government Relations with Phantom Fireworks, the nation's leading retailer of consumer fireworks. Um, at the onset, let me say that Phantom supports the expansion of consumer fireworks sales and use in the state of Minnesota. Um, our only reservation is that in doing so, we employ all of the current safety measures that have been adopted and um, formally proven to be successful in other states as well. 
Um, specifically, we focus on the um, sales menus, and as uh, it's not prescribed specifically in House Filing 329, what that essentially means is this becomes a tent state as it refers to consumer fireworks. And while we understand the, um, the, you know, some of the impetus for this decision, I'm not sure that any of the um, logic or reasoning for the other side, you know, has been adequately considered. But long and short of it is, in a permanent consumer fireworks retail sales facility, you're able to take advantage of all of the current safety standards available to the fireworks industry today. It's 2017. The fireworks industry has been around for a long time. Our company has been around for over 40 years. Like any industry, we have evolved over time, and we have learned that there are better ways to do things in the way that we did things 40 and 50 years ago. And as I look at House Filing 329, this looks like a fireworks bill that would be reminiscent of a state that legalized fireworks 30 or 40 years ago. Change a few words, put the tax money somewhere, and fireworks are now legal. Um, we do bring in NFPA 1124, um, which I think is, is, is a great example, and I think any state that's legalized fireworks in the last five years has done so. However, making it an unfettered, you know, really unregulated tent state, you know, does a couple of things. Again, you are not taking advantage of any of the current safety standards as far as, one, hard walls and a ceiling, you know, that provide immediate containment from any of the worst case scenarios that may present themselves in a building full of explosives. Um, and on top of that, you, you do not have a sprinkler system, you don't have a properly designed shelving system set up to adequately contain anything into that specific area inside of one of the stores. Um, the, have, the tent industry is a two-week industry, so anybody that's in that business and, and operating out of a tent is in the fireworks business. They're a fireworks employee for two weeks out of the year. Um, th there is no possible way that these people are adequately trained to answer the questions that you're faced with in a consumer fireworks retail sales facility around the 4th of July. I've been in this business for 15 years, and I promise you, <laughs> you're not equipped to answer the questions that are posed to you um, with two weeks of training that is largely focused on cash handling, for that matter. Um, lack of, I mean, not, not, nonetheless, not even having seen all of the fireworks that you're going to be selling and asking these or having the questions asked to you about. Um, tent sales, on top of that, offer no economic impact to the state whatsoever. With this bill, you will have no one buying property and building a store. You will have no one occupying a vacant building that sits anywhere in the state. You will not create jobs with this bill. The people that are working in tents are independent contractors. We're using the group, uh, the term community groups and, and nonprofit organizations, and it's nice. You know, based on what you are selling right now in the state, the ground-based <laughs> consumer fireworks, um, it's arguable, but maybe that's okay. You know, these are items where you light a fuse and they pretty much stay where they are. We're talking about legalizing to the full line of consumer fireworks. Some of these items are going to travel 150, 200 feet in the air or whichever direction they're pointed. Um, I'm not sure at that point that the Boy Scouts or the Little League team is the most sensible alternative to be selling those types of fireworks or to be the education expert for these types of fireworks that are currently illegal in the state. Um, we do have a bill um, that we've worked with Representative Lunan on. It's, it's House Filing 1191, and it mirrors very closely the state of Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania allows the full line of consumer fireworks, so what we're talking about enabling in this legislation to be sold out of a permanent brick and mortar facility, ground based fireworks can be sold out of tents. Currently, the numbers in Pennsylvania are there are 84 brick and mortar facilities in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, this model has been accused of, you know, being anti-competitive and, and, you know, monopolistic and other ideas like that by us. Um, our company, Phantom Fireworks, is the largest fireworks retailer in the state of Pennsylvania. We have seven locations. There are 84. We have less than 10 percent of the licenses in the state. The majority of the locations after that are in the rural areas that we're talking about populating with fireworks in Minnesota. Pennsylvania demographically sets up very similar to Minnesota in that there are two large pockets of population. Everything else is very rural. The majority of these locations in PA are very rural. On top of that, they have in between five and 600 tent locations that are selling the ground level of consumer fireworks. So the community groups are doing quite well in Pennsylvania. Um, so I'd point that out to some of the arguments on the other side that claim that this is, this is not a fair rendition of a fireworks bill. Um, on top of that, I, I think that in the current bill, there's no age restriction for the sale of fireworks. We talk about um, it, excuse me, you have to be 18 to purchase fireworks. There's no restriction on age for somebody working in a consumer fireworks retail sales facility. Uh, it seems to me that if you be, have to be 18 to buy, you should have to be 18 to sell. Um, and I think at, at very best, um, there is some confusing language as to the prospect of local control. 
Um, in the summary for House Filing 329, it says that communities can opt in or opt out of sale and use. And just quickly, if you look at the very last page of the bill, um, on page, or excuse me, lines one through four, um, it says you cannot regulate or restrict the sale or use. But then a couple sections down, it says that you can. So I assume your intent is that there is, um, but the language is, in my opinion, somewhat confusing. So with that said, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Sir, what would you say to your critics that uh, say that um, safety isn't your primary motive, but you're more worried about competition moving in on you? Well, I, I would say to that that we have one of the best stores in our company that's in the state of Wisconsin, um, which is doing a lot of business out of the residents uh, or off the backs of the residents in this state. And we have initiated pro-fireworks legislation in Minnesota for two to three years now. Um, we have not had the opportunity to gain much traction to it, but if the argument was purely to keep people off of our back, we wouldn't be looking to open up the state. Apart from that, the example of Pennsylvania that I mentioned. I, I don't know how it can any more clearly illustrate that advancing responsible legislation in the name of safety is anti-competitive in any way. Yeah, I, um, sir, I think the point I was getting at about the tents and things like this, um, personally, if we're going to sell it, I'd just soon open her up, but that's just my personal opinion. But thank you very much for your testimony. Um, appreciate you, it. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ray, or, uh, Representative Rick, do you have any... Uh, comments to make or rebuttal after some of the testimony you've heard? Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of quick follow-ups. Um, one, I appreciate, um, and I will look into it. Um, this is the first uh, anybody has mentioned to me about uh, putting in an age limit for selling fireworks. So um, I am absolutely um, open to, and I'll look at getting some language drafted, uh, doing the same thing, um, restrict having an age limit for uh, selling as well. Um, a couple of the points that were brought up, um, one that was brought up about the, that the industry sets the definition of the fireworks. Uh, we made it very specific in the bill that we tied the definition to a date so that the, if the industry changes the definition of the fireworks, that will not change Minnesota's law. We are tied to a definition and it will require the legislature to take action to change what is legal and what is not legal. Um, a, another uh, thought that I had, you know, we're, we, I know that this is a very temporary, Independence Day is the, the main time fireworks would be used. This is a very temporary, um, and I, I get that and I understand the issue of the safety. Uh, many of these tent operations, they are buying the fireworks from a distributor. The distributor brings in a metal storage container where the vast majority of their stock is contained. So they're only bringing out small amounts into the tent at one time, so there is that containment. It is a typically, you know, one of these metal storage containers that you would, similar to what you would see being on, on a train, you know, these ones that you rent and set in a location for temporary storage. So I believe that's, um, you know, protect doing a lot of the protecting. If there is an accident, it is contained in there, and what's in the tent is very limited. Um, and I would liken this to uh, the state fair. We have many people that come in with a temporary operation. They're bringing in uh, units that have deep fryers and this and that, and they're bringing in kids. Um, and we're not restricting the state fair and saying that this is too dangerous to do. So, um, and in regards to, um, I did save this for the end. Um, it was brought up and um, with the sales tax provision, and I did not want, I didn't want to bring that up at first. Um, I spoke to the state fire marshal and other fire chiefs. Uh, this was not an attempt to try to buy them off. Um, but speaking to some of my uh, small cities that have the volunteer fire departments, um, they have a very, very real issue of supplying their fire departments with the equipment that they need. Um, each individual firefighter, it costs the city a lot of money to equip that person, um, upkeep on their trucks and equipment. Um, so I saw this as an opportunity, and I know it's been done in a couple of other states where you dedicate money from fireworks sales to um, the fire departments. And so 25% um, of the sales tax generated would go to a volunteer fire assistance grants. So all volunteer fire departments would have access to apply for a grant for buying equipment. And then another 25% would go to the fire safety account um, that's accessible to the fire departments for you know training equipment um, 
And like I said, I'm not trying to buy them off, but this would be relief for our uh, cities, um, having another way to uh, fund uh, fire departments. Um, and actually, um, we will be um, in government operations if we get there. Um, we're going to be pulling that piece out and running it through as its own separate bill. Um, but this, you know, when we look at the five million dollars that was projected last time around, um, we're looking at anywhere from a one and a quarter million dollars to potentially two million dollars because we're going to be including the the novelties now as well, um, funding into each of those accounts per year, which will um, really really help our fire department. So, but um, I guess with that, I'd stand for any questions. Hey, Representative Ray, before I uh, have health, Representative Hills to ask a question, how many uh, more committees does the Fun and Freedom Act have to go through before it passes? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, by pulling out, um, pulling out the uh, sales tax provision, um, I believe uh, government ops will be the final committee stop, but then the sales tax provision will have to go to um, property tax, uh, taxes, and probably ways and means, and potentially environment and natural resources. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Representative Hilsberg. Uh Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Representative Rarick, I have a couple of questions related to the criminal law provisions that are currently in law that are not currently in your bill. Um, under Minnesota ch uh, statute 609.66, it is currently a felony to sell uh, explosives to a minor. Is it your intention to keep it so that in the event a uh, fireworks uh, company uh, sells to someone under the age of 18 um, without a parent's note that that would be a felony? Is it your intention for that to stay a felony? Representative Ray. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative, uh, actually, no, that would not be uh, my intent. So um, I would be more than happy to talk with you about that, how we could address that. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Another follow-up, Mr. Chair. Another. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, also, under criminal law, it is illegal for a felon to be in possession of fireworks as well. Is it your intention to permit or not to permit felons to possess these fireworks as under current law, they are not eligible to possess firearms, silencers, or explosive <coughs> devices? Representative Rick. Uh Mr. Chair, Representative, um, I had not thought about that uh, previously, I guess. Uh, uh, my initial reaction would be that I, I wouldn't think that a, a felon should be restricted um, from this uh, use. It's, a, it's recreational, uh, unlike firearm, or well, some uses of firearms are, are recreational, but I mean, I get the point. There's a difference, and so um, that would be a change I'd be willing to look at as well. Mr. Chair. Representative Hilster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Previously, the governor has vetoed uh, many of the provisions um, that are in this proposal. I have a copy of his April 28th of 2012 veto letter. Um, have you uh, taken steps in an attempt to alleviate the governor's concerns with this proposal? Uh, Representative Wright. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative, uh, <coughs> we have been working in, on that, and I have a request in with the governor's um, office to have a meeting with him or staff um, to explain the changes that we've made and see if he has any further changes that he would like to see. Um, and I'm hoping to hear back uh, soon if that I, may, that I would maybe be able to speak with him about that. So um, I. This um, kind of came up a little bit quicker than I anticipated, thus I, I don't have that meeting uh, set up yet. But um, absolutely, I'm trying to uh, speak with his office so that we can address all of his concerns. Mr. Chair, just a final comment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Eric, I do appreciate that you came over to me on the floor and you asked to talk to me about these proposals. And at the time, I had not yet read the language. And so um, I know that I asked you some of those questions, not giving you a heads up um, that I was going to um, ask them. Uh, members, I have one of the challenges because I personally love fireworks. However, um, I don't like tent sales. Um, I don't like people selling to children without their parents' consent. I don't like uh, felons uh, being in possession of explosive devices instead of um, guns or um, other kinds of devices. And so, um, members, there's a long list of folks who are opposed to the proposal at this time, and um, I can't support your bill. Um, I am for fun and freedom, Mr. Chair. Um, I have voted for fireworks previously. Um, I just can't vote for this bill. 
All right, members. Uh, Representative Dean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Rarick. Uh, you were talking a lot. I mean, I've seen some of these tents, and you say it's a small amount. Um, it looks pretty big to me uh, that they have on display and for sale. So you, you threw that around quite a bit. Um, do you have a personal definition of what a small amount would be for fireworks that are sold within a tent? I know I've got mine, a trunk load, but go ahead. So, uh, <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, I guess um, off the top of my head, I don't. I don't um, that would be something we could uh, potentially look at to put into language. Um, and I, I have spoke with others about uh, potentially putting in the requirement in the bill that the metal storage container would be required um, for the tents. Um, and then we could look at potentially setting, um, using the amount of uh, um, gunpowder you know, every type has a sure. a rating or whatever. And then putting, you know, figuring out, sitting down with the industries to figure out some type, how we would do that to say, you're only allowed to have so much in the tent at one time. Um, Mr. Chair, a um, couple other questions. So you put in the 60 day rule, and I'm sort of curious where that comes from because most tents aren't up but more than two weeks. So how did you arrive at a 60-day rule? And maybe you mentioned it and I just missed it. Um, Representative Rick. Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative, um, we, I, I guess I came up with that l last time around. We had about you know a five to six uh, week window that we were going to allow the sale of Ariel and Audible. Um, and I know that, uh, um, like I said, the vast majority of the tents um, only come up for two to three weeks. Um, my intent with the 60 days was that uh, allowing a little bit more of a period for those um, just in case they wanted to. Um, but for somebody who wants to go with year round, we kind of figured that over that 60 day was gonna, if you're gonna sell for more than 60 days, that was a permanent. But I'm, that's definitely something I'm willing to to talk to people about and see if that should be changed. Okay, a couple more questions, Mr. Chair. So this is maybe just because I, I don't know, but if I'm gonna be a retailer of fireworks, do I have to undergo a background check? Uh, Representative Rourke. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I, I don't think so, um, but that would be, um, I would have to look into that a little closer because I mean, we currently have people selling and that that might that's not covered in any of my new language um, that may be covered, but I don't believe it is covered in current law. So we currently have sales. But. Mr. Representative Chair and Representative Rock, I mean, that would really concern me. Um, it, something that a domestic terrorist could get access to become a retailer and buy large amounts of explosives and assemble them in a way that could cause huge damage uh, in certain situations and settings throughout the country. So very concerned about that. And my last question <coughs> is sparklers. Um, I don't know about you, but every box of sparklers that I've seen has a warning that says place in the ground light and get away and I think almost everybody I've seen that's used sparklers hold them in their hand and swirl them around so when you talk about some of these warnings uh, to be quite honest I you know the tobacco industry got in a lot of trouble for lying to consumers and also for you know they put warnings and the dangers but they knew how dangerous it was um, sparklers are really dangerous I mean, if you've ever been poked with one while it's lit, I mean, it can do some pretty har pretty significant harm. And I, I'm just, I'm just curious when you talk about these warnings, you know, do they really have any meaning at all when it comes to issues of fireworks? And that actually is a question I'd like you to answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Rick, and uh, we've got Representative Frankie and Considine left in uh, Representative Hilstrom's bill to do, if we can. Because we have to be out by noon. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative. Um, a lot of the tra I'm, um, who we're t speaking about is uh, there would actually be extra training. Um, you, if you go to some of these uh, places, you'll see they'll have videos that are playing on a continuous loop that explaining how to use fireworks safely. Um, some places they'll have instructions uh, typed up, and and the people selling 
can go over that and then send that with you. So they're not just relying on the labels. Um, you know, un unfortunately, like you said, people will misuse them. Um, when we look at the statistics, that's unfortunately sparklers are what predominantly our kids under nine years old that we that statistic was brought up. That's the injuries that are coming from there. You know, burns and uh, the young kids are being hurt by what's already legal in Minnesota. So um, this bill wouldn't have an effect on the sparklers. They're already here legal. But you're right. Um, we need people to follow uh, directions. And I think, you know, um, part of this is the fireworks companies will do a better, when they are allowed to sell the bigger types we've seen in other states, they do a much better job of running ads and things that speak towards safety and the proper use. No okay. response to that, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Representative Frankie and then Representative Constantine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Warwick, I just want to say thank you for bringing this to me ahead of time, um, kind of to what Representative Hillstrom was saying about the new members. Um, and allow it, so it gave me time to go back to my fire chiefs and police chiefs. And um, I just wanted to add that, you know, in my district, we are just minutes away from Wisconsin. So on Independence Day, the aerials that are going on around the local park are almost better than the aerials that are sponsored by the local Lions Club. Um, and the police don't have the opportunity to police those. It happens, it is so large. Uh, so I'm, I, I see the need and necessity in your bill, but, and I also like the fact of the tent sales. We have a couple of churches that hold the tent sales for the ground fireworks right now, currently, um, and it's a nice fundraiser for them. So I just wanted to once again say thank you, but at this point, with the opportunity to talk to my chiefs and some of the things that I'm hearing as far as the way the legislation is, I think eventually we could possibly get this through, but it prob it just seems to me like it needs more work. Um, and it's a, it's a tough road, so I, good luck. That's it, thank you. Uh, Representative Considine. Just for you, Mr. Chair, I'm going to forego it. Okay. All right, any other testimony? All right, um, we've got another bill up. Can you make it in one minute? Uh, can you pass? Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Uh, my name is Russ Cunningham, Pastor Russ Cunningham. I was actually invited to come and speak for the tent because I'm a TNT tent operator. And uh, I just wanna, wanna say how important it is for us to have the tents because as, as a small church in a rural community, um, I get, every year I, I run a tent. I've been doing it for five years now, and it's it's a huge fundraiser for me. I have we have a small church, but every Wednesday night I have about 50, 60 dysfunctional kids that show up and want their lives changed, and they're just messed up, and they can't afford to do anything. So when we do a TNT tent, we take the money that we raise, and we take each one of these kids on a two-day retreat, and for two days we speak uh, life into them and joy and peace, and and they're just their lives are changed because they have the opportunity to go, and that's what we do with the money that we raise from the TNT and we're very you know they train us how to how to be uh, uh, the salesman actually our tents you can't sell fireworks unless you're 18 and um, I just want to encourage that if you guys pass this bill that you would allow the tents to continue to do that thank you mr. chair okay I'm gonna renew my motion on house file 329 we didn't amend it uh, as amended to move to re-refer it to uh, government operations all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.